Hey guys, Simon Brown, driving instructor here. Hope you are well. So the next couple of videos I'm going to make are designed really to show you a few alterations to some driving test routes that we've had in Telford recently. A couple of new test routes and test routes change for a variety of reasons. They usually have a set number of test routes in any test centre across the country, but test routes can change sometimes depending on uh, roadworks, congestion issues, potentially at certain times of day. Um, things that don't necessarily work quite as well, sat nav might go a bit wrong on it so they alter it to make it a bit more streamlined and even sometimes I can only imagine it's down to, I've had I, from personal experience, road systems that are just a bit too complicated or a little bit too odd and students fail on them quite a lot so um, they've altered it to make it maybe slightly fairer, I'm not sure, if you've had experience of that please comment below, um, might be the case but certainly they've changed it to give it a better reflection on the whole of to show your driving standard. And these next couple of routes, some are very interesting and we'll get onto that topic about, about what it shows and what it perhaps doesn't show. Uh, but hopefully some of these will help. So let's get going and let's see what Guys, right, so I switched to a three camera view. I am starting from outside the test centre. I've just gone past the test centre, it's just behind me back there. So um, we're just on the road, Hortonwood 35, if you tap it into a sat nav or tap it into Google Maps, um, and that'll bring you down to the test centre road. Please make sure that you don't block the test centre area when tests are going out and coming back, just so people have got a fair shout to get back in the test centre. Um, just imagine what you'd feel like when you did your driving test. You don't want to be people blocking you and getting in your way, if at all possible. So let's do this new route first of all. Let's talk through it on the way give you a proper commentary on it. Let's see what happens, shall we? So let's move in away. So checking around, doing the basics. I'm not gonna go into major basics today because that's not really what we're here to do. We're here to talk about what you might experience on this test route, okay? So we're gonna go right at the end of the road. I would always recommend just briefly stopping at this junction when you come to it. People on the road are already doing up to and are potentially above 40 miles an hour. So it's just worth just crawling up to the line so you can see what's going on. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to use some acceleration and go. It's on a slight incline as well. So a little bit more gas than you perhaps normally give a normal move off just to get you out of there. Up to 40 if possible. I appreciate there's roundabouts either side of this junction, uh, road system, sorry, but if you can get towards 40, even better. I'm going ahead at the roundabout, so I'm on the sat nav, the sat nav will tell me to cross the roundabout, second exit. Just checking behind me, looking okay. I'm going to use gear two because I'm not happy with the size of the roundabout. Give me a chance to track where that silver car, grey car is going. And I'm off the roundabout. Good, okay. So unfortunately the sign is actually in half. It's been broken into pieces on this next roundabout. Hopefully they're going to sort that out at some point. I'm turning right fourth exit. It's off towards Whitchurch, so you can't see that because the sign isn't complete, but uh, in the far right hand lane, I'm just going to give way to this car on the right coming, and I'm also going to give way, am I going to give way to the learner? No, I'm going to go, I think I've got time to do that, so I'm going to move off there, hopefully you've seen me do that. Vehicle emerged quite early there, so just being aware of them as I exit. Seems to be happening a lot recently. Before people have even got past the exit on the roundabout, vehicles are kind of starting to emerge out of their exit, um, which is all well and good, providing the person already on the roundabout is continuing to move at a consistent pace. If there's any change in speed, certainly for a learner, I certainly wouldn't be doing that with a learner driver. Um, sometimes a learner speed can be slightly odd and they can ease off the gas a bit too much, brake a bit too early, that kind of thing. Um, I've made sure that the person already on the roundabout who has priority um, is well clear before you decide you're going to move onto the roundabout. All for flow and keep 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 moving and things like that. There's got to be a safe a safe space to do that. You've got to be intruding anybody else's space. 50 speed limit. Just going through a couple of sets of traffic lights. Just carrying on for now. When I come to the next roundabout, I'm going to go ahead and take the third exit. I'm going to talk to you on the next road about the potential uh, shortcomings of this new test route. Uh, not to knock the test route at all, um, I think it's quite a nice test route, but it, there's a 
couple of things that I think are missing from it. I'm going to talk to you about what that is in a, in a moment. Just going to head third exit from the left hand lane. Keep it to the left and coming off. Always be aware that if you're hearing cross the roundabout, it might not be second exit, it might be third exit, it might be fourth exit. If it's if the, depending on where the exit is on the roundabout, depends on what lane you're going to use. So that exit for me was bang on ahead. If I'm thinking about a clock, which is the basic principle of it, we're talking about 12 o'clock. So I'm coming from 6 o'clock, going to 12 o'clock. I'm going to be in the left hand lane. Just checking my right side, no one's merging. It's all good. Okay, what you're going to see next is a lot of country road driving for a, for a little bit. Um, and yes, it shows speed and it shows ability to make progress and it shows um, positioning on country roads and things like that but what it doesn't really show this route at all there's barely any in fact there isn't any dual carriageway work on it there's barely any trench lock gyratory slash ring road style roundabout work um, a lot of it is just kind of straight line driving and ability to get to appropriate speeds so I'm a little confused by it. It was a route that they first put in and they had more going on with it before this and it was a very a very country road route before this. They've changed a little bit of it now. Uh, but yeah, I'll come back to this in a second. I'm going ahead and then right. So I'm going to show you how to potentially do it if you don't know that you're going right on the next roundabout. But there is a potential for you to be able to use that right hand lane. To go ahead as well the sign the arrows on the floor do allow you to do that but if you use the left hand lane accident you've then got to go mirrors signal and get over to that right hand lane to be able to then go right third exit in quite a short space of road so if you can plan and if you know that you're going right on this second roundabout as long as the arrows on the floor show that the right lane can go ahead you could use the right lane on approach for that one that's just good that's just good planning however if you've had it drilled into you that left lane goes ahead, you end up in the left lane, just do what I just did there. That's why I did it, to show you how to do it safely. Just make sure you don't move across on the roundabout, wait until you're in between the roundabouts to move, okay? National Speed Limit Road now, I've gone out to the Whitchurch Road, so I'm heading out towards Long Lane and the, um, the restaurant called The Ugly Duckling. Good food there if you've not been, a little prop for The Ugly Duckling there. Um, and again, not really a country road as such, quite a wide lane on both sides and just nice scenery, up to 60 miles an hour, definitely safe to get to towards 60, I'm doing 59 at the minute, got a good gap with the BMW ahead of me, but yeah, just, it's just a lot of straight line driving, which is okay, if you get it, don't knock it, but uh, so I'm being aware of all surroundings here, obviously people might be overtaking cyclists on this road. Potential during the week as well for agricultural vehicles, so tractors and diggers and things like that because lots of fields a bit further on ahead there's a brand new housing estate that they're building out in Crudgington. So potential for all that going on, so I'm just going to keep regularly scanning that. I'm going to Long Lane now, which is a little small village. And then I'm going to take a left turn, and it comes up quite quickly, and I can just see the signs ahead. So I'm going to start signalling now, because I've got to get this speed down. And I can just see it says Longdon and all Scott, there's a picture of a phone, I guess there's an emergency telephone um, somewhere. So it's just, literally just past the other duckling. I've got like a little runner, runoff lane I can use there to get into the turn a bit tight. It's quite tight to the left tight to the right so keeping yourself in second gear keeping that clutch down and then the road follows round to the left very easy to miss and very easy to get that wrong as well but other directions that i would go are different roads into housing estates so make sure you follow it round to the left a little bit more of a narrow situation now so we're just going to keep it nice and steady um and as you can see ahead what I was just talking about a moment ago of agriculture vehicles. In fact, there are two in a convoy there, so I'm not going to get rushing on my speed up to where that Ford is because there's no point in going any quicker because I'm just going to have to slow back down again when I get closer to the tractors or whatever they are. I'm not really clued up on agricultural vehicles, so I'm just going to say they're the tractors. <laughs> um, there's no centre line, so I'm just keeping 
left of centre, thinking about my position on the left, making sure I'm not getting too close to this grass verge. Still thinking about my left knee, my left arm being in the centre of my lane, in inverted commas, but just sort of splitting the road in half and as long as I keep my right knee roughly in the centre, just going to avoid this pothole a little bit, then I know I'm going to be okay now. They're breaking, okay. I'm turning left at the end of the road, so I'm going signal in left. I'm going to take these guys a bit longer than normal to move out of these junctions, so I'm just going to give them a little bit more time and space. I'm not going to rush up to the line here. In fact, they're lorries towing agricultural vehicles, so uh, even more interesting. Now, there is room for me to go next to the Fiesta, but I don't want to block their view. So I'm just going to hang back a fraction just so they get ahead. And I'm going to crawl forward and I can go there. So if you'd have gone right alongside that Fiesta, yeah, you'd have seen pretty well. But if, surely you can see enough if you hang back a little bit and then the Fiesta's got a better chance to be able to see and get going as well. Just all kind of uh, play the game and help each other out a little bit yeah, if we can. So we're back on country roads, we're back to having the centre line now. So we know roughly where we are position wise again now rather than having to, to guess. Notice how there is no speed change at all on the entirety of that road. So as far as we're aware, that entire stretch was national speed limit still, but it's all about appropriate speed there. This road and the risk level is very, very different to the potential higher risk level of that previous road that's been on. Slowing back down to 40. Making sure we're at 40 in plenty of time. I'm going to stay in gear 5 though. This car quite likes being in uh, fifth gear at 40. It copes, copes quite well fuel efficiency wise. And then I'm already getting back towards Shawbirch. I'm taking the next road on the right. So it's going into another housing estate. It goes into a road called Glover's Way. So I'm just going into a housing estate. Now down here, expect to park up on the left a couple of times. Don't forget, examiners will try and get you to do that three or four times on your driving test in different scenarios. On a hill if there is one, behind a parked car, about car length, different situations, and it's all about how you know where somewhere safe is. So, somewhere safe, legal, and convenient. So, not around uh, double park, not opposite another park car, not on a sharp bend, not on the brow of a hill, not too close to a junction within 10 meters of a junction or a turn, not uh, by drop curbs. So, there's a lot of drop curbs around here. So, I've been thinking about I could park somewhere like just off the corners, park, park somewhere here. I could park a little bit further on. I'm just going to carry on following the road around. Again, I'm thinking about reducing my speed a little bit through here just because it is a bit windy. My view ahead isn't very clear. My vanishing point isn't clear ahead. And I'm going to turn left at the end of this road. So this is some T-junction situations that we're seeing here, I guess, and some housing estates. I'm going to keep crawling, lean forward, have a look, and I'm going to carry on there. We're now on a road called Crowdale Road. Okay, a little bit tight with the bollards. They might pull you up and stop you maybe on the left or the right here with that roadwork sign is because there's plenty of space on either side to do a pull up on the right and reverse back as well remember that might be one of your maneuvers on your driving test carrying on a couple of center islands which make my road feel a little bit smaller than it is psychologically makes me slow down which is doing the right thing carrying on to the end of this road i'm going back to a four speed limit i'm turning left at the end of the road so a couple of cars just navigate myself through that little space no one come in, so I'm good. I'm going to use gear two a second. I'm going to crawl and have a look. No, it's definitely gear one with what's coming. Got a red car turning left. Just make sure they are slowing because they're coming quite fast still. And then I'm going to go. I was a little unsure about the speed. Um, they were definitely indicating, but they weren't slowing down particularly early. So I just wanted to give them a couple more seconds. I'm going to take the next road on the right into Shawbirch. Got a lovely long protected right turn lane to use here so I'm using all of it in the lane early looking ahead oh, I can see it's pretty close so I'm going to commit there I'm turning into Glade Way which is part of Shawbirch and again lots to think about around here lots of twists and turns potential uh, pedestrians school children that kind of thing around here it's got a built-up area so just be extra careful when you go around these corners expect the unexpected like parked cars just on bends things like that all things to be aware of but when you i mean other than country roads at the start this is just kind of built up area driving isn't it really it's kind of like you 
are seeing quite a bit, but I think it's a very interesting test route decision. I'm not knocking it. If any examiners are watching this, please don't shout at me when I see it at the test centre next time. I'm not knocking your decisions at all. It's obviously come from a place of uh, a place of care, and there's obviously been a very good reason for it to be added or re-added, shall I say? They've amended it quite a bit from the previous route that it used to do, but it just seems to just go on. It's like just built up driving. Whether they're going to use this as a particular time of day, so I mean, an 8:10 would an 8:10 a.m. test route have any issues getting around here? Possibly not. Would a 3.29 test time have any issues? Possibly not. They might decide they're going to use that. We've got a couple of car parks they go past that they could use. So you've got um, the co-op, sorry, not the co-op, the spa car park on the right. Although it's quite a bad, busy car park all the time. It's really tight as well. So maybe not, but the wood wall pack car park they could use potentially for four park. We're going left at the roundabout, okay? Back to a 40 speed limit. Looking on the right, good view on the right only, so I can stay in third if it's clear, which it is. Quite a tight turn, a bit tighter than a normal roundabout left turn would be. I'm back on this road now, heading back to that roundabout that we turned right on the Whitchurch earlier on. But I'm turning right third exit this time. So going off towards Wellington, the M54. So positioning right nice and early. Slowing myself down. I cannot see very much as it stands. There is a van turning left, but other than that, not a lot. Um, it's 4.40 in the afternoon on a Saturday afternoon, guys. So just give you a heads up on what kind of traffic you might find. Tests have finished for the day, so you won't be able to do a driving test at this time of day on the weekend, but during the week, um, they, I do believe they're doing a 4.30 p.m. test at the minute, or they have been when examiners have been available, so you may get the test time similar. Bearing in mind during the week of 4.40, you will be just about to hit rush hour traffic, so just factor that into your decision. I appreciate that you won't always be able to choose what time you get, because the availability is not brilliant again at the moment. I think the earliest test dates we have in Telford are October. So, um, another interesting situation for examiners and students alike to be in. 40 speed limit road heading down towards the hospital now. And, uh, Still keeping a watch out on things, but quite an empty looking road this one. Not really too much going on this one. No one can park on it because there's single white lines on the left and the right, so no stopping, no parking at any time. And the, uh, the no stopping sign is regular down here. Now I'm going to come into a speed change and a crossing, and I'm taking the second exit for Lugomery, so the second exit on the left. So don't signal because that's into the hospital. We want to delay our indicator and treat it like we're going ahead. But we're not going dead ahead, we're going second exit. So it's kind of like nine o'clock on our clock face position. So I'm getting past hospital. Now I'm checking the mirrors and I'm going to signal make sure no one's coming out of hospital too early. Into Legomery, Granger Drive, Apley slash Legomery, should I say. It starts off as Apley, turns into Legomery. Telford's a very strange place. We go very quickly from place to place. Sometimes we overlap quite a lot. Um, We've done Admiston, Legomery, Shawbirch, Apley, <laughs> Long Lane, <laughs> where on the way to Allscut. Lots happening, lots of different names, so um, don't get too bogged down with that if you're doing your driving test. You can work that out once you've passed your driving test. And uh, one road hump, just be aware of that. The markings have faded a little bit with the arrows, so just be aware of that one. Just a single hump, I'm not quite sure why it's there. Um, I'd be concerned if I had a neck injury going to the hospital with one, one road hump, but. Um, there we go. It's meant to slow people down for some reason, so they've also had issues with speed there in the past, so everything is there for a reason. Still following the road ahead, I'm going to come to a mini roundabout shortly, and I'm going to go ahead second exit on the mini roundabout, so no signal. I'm just going to focus on my steering, because I'll make sure I get around the mini roundabout safely. So no one on the left, nobody on the right, so I'm going to go around it as best I can. If you go right round it, you can, as long as it's not too much of a built up roundabout, you can go ever so slightly over it. And when I say over it, I mean then I think my back right wheel went over it at the very most. I have gone the majority of the way around it, so please make an effort to do that. Don't just go straight over the centre of it because uh, I'm pretty sure an examiner would have something to say about that. Still following more housing estates. 
so <laughs> again another interesting little bit um, to be honest with you I use these areas when a student is first leaving Horton Wood if I've never if they've never driven a car before that's what we tend to use school zone signs aren't flashing so we don't have to reduce our speed to 20 we can stay at a nice sensible speed I'm doing 28 right now um, of course if those lights were flashing it's advised that you do 20 doesn't doesn't it's not mandatory but it's advised that we keep our speed down and if you it's around school times I probably would keep it towards the 20 20 mark if possible um, just because of the amount of risk in the area hazard situations you might come into contact with and if we can keep it at 20 we can do with those hazards a lot easier this isn't a very nice road hump so it's going a bit slower this one it's quite a built up one uh, good to see they've done it properly um, when there were floods about a year or so ago the flood actually destroyed that hump and bumped it all up made it really steep so they got rid of it and they've put a proper one in now which looks good um, still going on I know I've got a mini roundabout coming up. The sat nav uh, isn't on today because um, it's broken. I don't know what's happened to it, but I'm trying to sort it out as we speak. Uh, mini roundabout, we're going to go right. Slow right now. The view on the right isn't very clear, so I'm going to go extra slow here. Leaning. I know I can go there. I am just watching the left as well because quite a lot of vehicles that come from the left don't actually even notice the mini roundabout. They just come flying over it. So be extra aware of the left. Don't give way to a minute of the left, obviously, because you should, in theory, have priority to go there. Really, we should only give way to the right, realistically. But be aware that people might come flying from that left side and they might not stop. So you want to be extra cautious with that. All right. Now we're out of this bit now into Hadley, and we're turning left at the traffic lights. So we're going to mirror signal left. We've got a separate light for turning left. It's just gone to red and really, so I'm stopping well away from the cycle lane, I'm keeping to the right of the cycle lane that's down the left channel of me and I'm also keeping away from the cycle lane at the front so if a cyclist wants to get either to the left or ahead of me they can and I'm just waiting for my little filter light, even when it's gone to green I am still going to watch the right because I'm watching for a certain type of vehicle that might not abide by traffic lights um, and I'm not sure, not sure about BMW drivers or RV drivers, I'm talking about emergency vehicles and there's nobody there so I'm good you can comment as much as you want. You know who you are. <laughs> I'm just uh, causing some commotion on the internet there. Um, ironically, as I said that, I realised I wasn't in gear. So uh, that's why there was a bit of a delay between me going and the light going to green and me moving. So there we go. Thank you very much. Happy face. Going ahead at these lights, I'm just going to keep in the left hand lane. The left lane and the middle lane can both go ahead. The right, the left, so the, the second lane, lane two, so the right hand lane to me now, that is going to merge in with me shortly. So I'm just going to make sure no one's there. But ultimately, if I'm in the left hand lane, I don't really have to worry too much about changing positioning. So I'll just observe. Just taking a bit of speed off just to make sure this white car doesn't emerge and let that traffic clear from ahead of me. Crossing is all good, nobody there. Carrying on ahead. I'm heading back down towards. Um, trench lock now, so trench lock jury to be around about. And this is the only time you will see trench lock on this video, on this entire test room, which is interesting. So uh, I'm going ahead of the little roundabout by the Esso garage, and I'm going to be using the left lane of trench lock to go back off towards uh, the A442 North. So let's have a little look what's happening on that right hand side. Nothing going on there. Just have to keep an extra senses of the zebra cross in because it's a very wide one. All good. Silver car is waiting, so we're all fine. So I'm using the left lane and I'm taking the third exit. So no signal initially because I'm not taking the first, I'm taking the third. The lights are staying on green, so I'm just hugging the grass on the left. I'm looking for A442 North. My road marking say on my gear green sign says that as well. Looking a bit further on, A442 North again. Exit one there for Magna. Exit 2 for RBSL, so please don't turn into any of those two because they're not going to go anywhere. This is my third exit, signaling so I'm coming off and I'm keeping this speed reduced. Be so disciplined on this bit guys. The amount of people I see that go well over 30 on this bit, it's another 15 until you reach these signs. Now you can speed up. I appreciate that 
naturally coming off a junction or a roundabout, the intention is there to speed up, but you've got to be really cautious there. Um, you'll see vehicles go flying past you much quicker, but just be disciplined, you know? just hold your nerve on that one, keep it at 30, okay? Let me turn you right at the roundabout, fourth exit, the sign is missing an exit, but there are four exits, sorry, five exits including mine, but four options on the roundabout. I'm going to stop for this Audi, I think. Yeah, I am. And then I'm going to go afterwards. So here, yeah, right, fourth exit. So that Denso one isn't on the sign, but we still count it as an exit because it's part of our roundabout. Exit two, exit three. Big left check, coming off. Checking a couple of times. You notice I've checked a few times there, coming off big roundabouts like that. Anything you can do to do additional checks, don't just do one check in the, in the sort of signal and don't look again. Get numerous checks in, that way you know it's clear as you move from the right lane to the left lane, or right position to the left position, um, what's going on, alright? You can track them, if there's a vehicle there, you can track them all the way. Back to Trench Lock, sorry, back to Horton Wood through Trench Lock. This is a Saturday, please bear with me. Onto a 40 speed limit road, I've got a couple of vehicles ahead of me. I'm taking the second left turn. Um, the first left turn is here. And the second left turn is quite hidden. I'm going to start checking my mirrors and I'm going to signal because I know it's coming up. I can see the lines and the marking just coming into view now. Down gear to gear two. Into Horton with 35 again. Home and dry. And then I park in the test centre, but the test centre is shut. So I'm just going to park up outside. In fact, what I am going to do, I'm going to turn in as if I'm turning into the test centre. So here, let's get right. Nice and slow, gear 2, maybe even gear 1 if you want to go extra slow, if you've got a bit of a queue. I'm going to just roll into the test centre, I'll stop down the barrier. And we are home and dry. And if you've already done a manoeuvre already, you will just forward park at the end. If you haven't done a manoeuvre, we will be asked to reverse the park, and that's how we will finish our driving test. There you go guys, so lots of country roads, um, lots of twists and turns, and quite a lot of um, housing estates. Interesting route if you get it on your test. I think you're laughing with that one personally, but good luck with it all. Any questions, any comments, please let me know as always. If you haven't already subscribed, press that subscribe button down here. Make sure you get this notification bell on so you get all the updates as well. And uh, catch you soon. Cheers, guys. Take care.